Chrissy, how does it feel to, uh, to share so much of yourself with the world? Well, this is the thing. When I uh, started in radio, um, I turned up to a little studio in Maroochydore in on the Sunshine Coast 10 years ago and nobody told me anything about what the job was about. It was just like, you were on telly, people are going to listen, get in there. And I had all this framework of what I would and wouldn't talk about and try to manipulate, you know. I want people to think I'm all these things. What weren't you going to talk about? Well, I just thought, you know, your, your natural thing is to not... Um, not do the warts and all. You know, when you're meeting somebody at a party, you don't go, sometimes I pick my nose and, um, <laughs> you know, uh, sometimes my underpants are so bad that I take them off in the car and, and go without them for the rest of the day. Like you, don't, you don't offer that. Um, so that was w what I started with. And then it got so exhausting yeah. <laughs> trying to control the head case that I am that I just went, oh, God, it's so much easier to just go, <laughs> there it is. And I found the more I did that, everyone was like, yeah, me too. I was, you know. So is there anything that is off limits? Like, do you, do you have a little list anymore? Um, I have a little list now only because it came back and bit me in the ass. And actually the column is in the book. Um, I was talking about how um, I, it, it all happened in the same week, weirdly. Um, I did a cover for Women's Weekly and I did an article, uh, I did a column about not knowing about um, how, how to feed and uh, a three-year-old and yep. how my three-year-old was a bit chubby and I didn't know how it had happened. And turns out you're not supposed to have five bananas a day. But I didn't know that. Didn't and know. that was why I wrote the column yeah. because I thought if I don't know that, chances are other people don't know that either. And there was this big backlash about me having fat kids and la, la, la. So now I don't really go into anything like that. I think when you have kids, you've got to go, oh, yeah, that's right. They've yeah. got their own identity and they're not my possessions. Do you find it as they're getting older too? As they get older, yeah. yeah. And like Leo's just started kindy and I think that that's sort of the cutoff. Well, once they get to three... Um, I need to be a bit more careful and there'll be no photographs and all that sort of business from now on. Did you do mother's group? Oh, I did for two weeks and I tell you, I failed miserably. What happened? What a miserable bunch of women. Yeah, I never did it. They didn't they invite didn't... me. Didn't they? No. Well, they I didn't send me the letter. Oh. I came late because you know it's according to suburb. Yeah, yeah. So I had Leo in one suburb and then I moved three weeks later. Yeah. So I missed the whole thing. I was not in that suburb. I wasn't in that suburb and I didn't really care. And then, you know, you go and take your kid to get measured and checked and whatever. Yeah. And the maternal health nurse was like, how's mother's group? And I said, oh, look, I haven't been going. Yeah. And so she sort of made me gate crash this established group and eight months in. Oh. And they were awful. Yeah. They were awful. They were like, they did, we did this exercise once. They all went out for mum's dinner. <laughs> and so I went, I'm going to go along and, you know, put in an effort. So we're sitting around and one of them goes, OK, um, here's an idea that I heard from another mother's group. Let's all go around and say one thing we don't like about our children. Oh. And so they were like, oh, you know, Nathaniel won't sleep through and Cody's a little bastard and whatever. <laughs> they all went around and, and I was like... Oh, um, I, I don't know. I couldn't think of anything. Yeah. And then we had to do, all right, okay, everyone go. Now let's go around and do one bad thing, uh, one good thing about our kids. And then they couldn't do that. And I was like, I'll go first. I'm like, oh, he's this, he's that. I'm waxing miracle about you know, this miracle child. He tastes so wonderful. Yeah, oh, he's just delicious and so bright, gifted. And um, anyway, they couldn't play. They couldn't play. On the positives, and I well, just thought, why? That's what it, do you ladies. think they were? The I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's not. It's the most wonderful thing I've ever done. Do you think it's the small things then that? I mean, because a lot of your columns have a real sense of what what makes you happy and mm. what is happiness and how you know. And it seems to be the, the everyday things. You know, the yeah. the kind of simply your children, your partner, yeah, your family. It's like I think that involves a shifting as well, a shifting of your mind of. And I think that's what happened when I had kids. Yeah. I sort of stopped looking and I thought, I've been looking for 35 years and I'm happy, yeah. but I'm exhausted as well by that, yeah. the never-ending search. Yeah. So 
I just sort of shifted and I thought, this is my little patch and everyone in it I really, really like and um, I'm just going to enjoy it. And they do, I guess at the thing when you've got kids, it's like you're locked in. I mean, when you start a new job, you don't know how long it's going to last, all those things. But you yeah. have a kid, you're like, OK, I've got 20 years yeah. at least. I can't. I know what I'm doing. Yep. I know what I'm doing. Yep. Yeah. So um, bad dates. Yeah. They were worth it. Oh, my God. They're great. Yeah. They're great stories. Yeah. I mean, some dates, you know, some guys I kept on seeing just because my friends loved the <laughs> stories. What was the one you had something about... Um, a guy who parked to get a motorbike loan? Yeah, yeah. He said he pulled up um, outside the bank and he said, I'm just going to pop in here. And it was when ATMs were sort of newish. Mm. And, uh, and I thought, oh, cool, he's going to go to one of those fancy flexi teller things. And um, half an hour, 45 minutes, he came out with, he, he'd applied for a loan for a motorbike while I waited <laughs> on the street. Classy. <clears throat> Did you see him? I saw him? him again. You saw him again? Yep. Did you pleasure him? Um... Yes, I think I did. He he broke every rule and I still kept on seeing him. And that's why I think about my daughter. I'm like, I'm so sorry, but you have to go through it. You have to go through it. You do, don't you? You have you can't. to. I've started doing that lately with my kids. Oh, my son, the six-year-old, I keep wanting to tell him, don't worry. I was telling him this morning with the teach, he's worried, I didn't bring my library book. And he thinks he's going to get in trouble. And I said, look, mate, they, they're not really cross at you. They don't care. Yeah. Like, they're just pretending that they're cross at you. Like I was trying to say, yeah. don't, don't listen to them. And I thought, he doesn't get that. No. And all the I, things I, I worry say about. to him, I, and, and there's no way that you can fully express the small stuff that worries them so much. Mm. But I try and say the world is big. One day you'll realise that the yeah. world is big and that, that sort of stuff doesn't really matter, but they do get really yeah. crazy. Yeah. Anxiety. It's funny seeing anxiety in that small child and seeing that their part, their life is going to be full of that. Yeah. Sometimes it's strangely flattering, though. The other day at kindy, I, Leo was running around playing with a kid and I thought, oh, he's entertained. I'm just going to stop in and see, um, you know, the head of the kindy and organise something, I think or like a donation or something for a cocktail party. Anyway, so I just ducked in there. I heard wailing and he was from outside and he yeah. thought I'd gone without him. Oh, I was like, ha ha! <laughs> he really loves me. Yeah. He covered me. Yeah. me. It is. Nice. Actually, you know, I've had a few times when something's gone wrong and it's terrible. You get so much pleasure from their sadness. I know, yeah. but it's really nice. They're so, showing human yeah. emotion. Yeah. They actually know I'm, I'm not just their yes. slave. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It is weird because I've got so many things going on that, um, you know, I'm ordering the fruit and veg, doing my coals online, I'm paying the bills, I'm organising Leo's bag, I'm doing all this stuff concurrently. And when you're doing that, you kind of think that everything's going to fall apart if, if you're gone. Like I yeah. think, what if I died? They'd be so sad That'd be terrible. and they'd be stuffed as well because... They wouldn't they know how to do the coals online. They don't even know where anything is. Do you ever tell that? I sometimes say to my husband, oh, you know, there's frozen meal in the fridge if I die. Or when I was <laughs> breastfeeding, you, know, you freeze some milk, there's enough milk there that'll get you through the three days. You can do it. Yeah. You can do it. You know, here's, here's the login. I keep on forgetting my coals online login. It drives me mad. So I must, I must leave that somewhere for them in case I die. Um, but you know what the thing is, and it and it is um, it is sad, but they cope. But also, don't you reckon if you died, that there would be like I, I kind of think if my husband died, everyone would assume I would just get on with it. But mm. if I died, it'd be like he'd, he'd be born again. He could sleep with wherever he wanted. <laughs> yeah. There'd be all those meals at the door, you know. I know, I know. That's right. Yeah. It's funny talking about death to kids, and I sort of did it did it inadvertently the other day. You said you're going to die. Leo, yeah. By the way, sweetie, <laughs> um, Leo was going to bed and uh, he said, I don't, I don't want to go to sleep. I said, well, you know, if you, if you don't sleep, you die, actually. Yeah. You know, if you... Um, <laughs> if I don't, you don't want to make love, too far a point of it, but... If you don't love mummy, you die. You die as well. <laughs> if you don't and clean up your liquor, If you don't you have die. those carrots, you die. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I go, you know, it's really... I, I was just trying to convey to him that sleep is as important as, you know, yeah. air. And, um, and I said, I think I just read today that you can last like two days without sleep and yeah. then it's lights out yeah. permanently. And he's like, he goes, if you die, will we still go on holidays? <laughs> I said, no, probably not. 
lights out. <laughs> my daughter said, when you die, can I have your iPad? <laughs> I was like, hey, that's really My nice. son said that too, not when you die, but he said, is it possible for me to have my own iPad? <laughs> no, yeah. it's not. They start asking for that thing. Do you feel a bit sad watching them grow? You know that thing of, I felt like I've with my kids you grieve. Or, I mean, you look, Peggy's so cute. And I think, oh, in, so in a month, cute. she won't be that anymore, will she? She will it's be this funny. next thing. I, I feel sad and exhausted and sometimes I sorry as well, a little bit apologetic. Like I just think back on all those tedious years and all those awful things you have to go through before you know yourself and, yeah. um, you know, you find someone who loves you and yeah. all that sort of stuff and I look at them and I think god you've got such a lot of shit to get through yeah. before you get to the part where you realize that you're fine the way you are and it's your life and you can do whatever you want but there's so many years where you listen to other people and you don't really know what you're doing and when did you get to that point when I had children do you know what? I just want I just want to have some fun I think for me it's like fun is paramount yeah and there's so much boring stuff in the world in the day-to-day. -day. And so for me, the pursuit of fun is, is very high up on my list of priorities.